365 with Daniel, your daily dose of inspiration. So thank you again, Jersey, for accepting uh, this invite. And uh, the first question is, who do you admire the most and why? <laughs> Definitely my wife. <laughs> your wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's listening now or uh, she's uh, no, she's not sorry. <laughs> she doesn't even know. <laughs> but, but, <right. laughs> well, you know, uh, I met my wife when she was about almost sixty years old, and mm. and she was so high quality that when I actually saw her on the city first time on the street in the city, that you know I was born and she was born. No, she actually was born in a different city. But when I saw her first time, I was so, uh, you know, scared to uh, talk to her because I thought that it would be rejected right away. Right? It's just like this, this integrity and pride and then all of it. Like this kind of a Slavic thing, maybe. I don't know. But it was powerful. Powerful enough that I even was scared to go and talk to that girl. So. Uh, and uh, that, so I gave up. I, I didn't approach, right? I didn't have idea. <laughs> no plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best plan, to not have one. <laughs> that was the best plan then. So, uh, so what I did was uh, I gave up, uh, went home, and then two weeks later, I saw her again. But still, I was not really ready. No plan. <laughs> and I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> You're so, trying to uh, get more time. <laughs> so the third time uh, when I met her, she was with her sister, and then I knew her sister. Mm. So that was, you know, in for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I stop and talk a little bit and so on. And, yeah. You know, and then we uh, we really like each other. We started really uh, hanging around and talk and talk and. And we really like to walk, uh, you know, the city and then walk around the city. And then I would talk never end. And, <laughs> and really today, after, you know, almost 50 years. Congrats. It, it didn't end. You know, we still talk a lot and, <laughs> and, and write, you know, uh, new books and, and <laughs> question ideas and, and debate. And it, it's really Look great. It's really great, but so it's she, a great dynamic. Yeah, yeah. But why she? Uh, I think that she is a incredible uh, blend of qualities. This the physical qualities. She was seven times world champion at weightlifting, yeah. and she's sixty two years old today. But she cleans, cleans and jerk her body weight. She's powerful. I, I, I wow. You know, she's sixty two, yeah. but she walks like a like a you know tiger. <laughs> Soft and, and powerful. At the same and, time, you know, she uh, also she has a really high integrity. She always mean really good to any human being. Her spirituality is not uncompromised. So you know, and she loves philosophy. She loves people. She's the one. So, you know, all all of it is kind of uh, uh, together. We have a perfect blend of mind, body, and soul. You know, I've, I've never seen a, a, a batter in my life. Really. Do you think it's uh, hard to to find this? I well, I I'm sure it's hard to find because you know I didn't find many people like this. Mm. Right? So uh, yeah. she came from you know, but she came from the house and and then Eva her. Uh, sister came from the same house, but Eva didn't have that quality. Uh, you know, she was uh, more fun, and and but but she was not as intense and uh, had this, uh, this this integrity, yeah, uncompromised integrity, very powerful. You can always count count on her, right? So it's kind of like if you have a friend like that, you're lucky. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess these kind of traits are more are harder to find each day because yeah, and she's she's yeah. also in a constant, uh, you know, growth. 
right? She's never that's amazing. Up, you know, uh, and and she's flexible in this integrity too. She's able to was able to adapt to our daughter and and find a way to uh, stay away uh, from nagging and you know <laughs> doing the things with upset actually our daughter she was able to adapt to that so she's also uh she changes also during uh the time that we live for better i mean mm. so your wife she's the one definitely my wife everybody wants to be a friend of Anjala, so you know like, <laughs> if you're a friend of Anjala, you <laughs> you could <laughs> you're on the short list <laughs> 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 okay. Um, what is one habit that you adopted recently and that paid off in a good way? Well, recently is really hard, hard to you know, you know, okay. talk about because you know, habit is a uh, you know, for me, habit is like <laughs> ten years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the word recently is not really the thing, but. Um, I think writing poetry would be, you know, the the thing that I started when I was about 32. So half of my age, I'm writing poetry. And uh, poetry connected me to really uh, great experiences of poets and, and their expression of, of love and care that... Uh, deepen my soul and, and make me a better person. Also during the process of writing, I change mm -hmm. a lot, I adapt it. It's just not like you um, you are uh, writing poetry and you are so smart that you will write poetry. You're not going to write poetry because poetry is an embodiment of, of, of becoming the poems. It's, it's just, you cannot write a great poem without being the poem, you know, being to mm -hmm. experience what the poem is about. So that's why it's really hard to read and how to really uh, write poems. And poetry creates this space uh, where you meet other poets, uh, their feelings about things they, they go through. And that we always kind of want to be a little bit better in poetry, actually, than our uh, life. And it's easier to um, accept the hard choices uh, when actually we read about others and experience others, uh, where others were uh, flexible enough and adaptable enough to embrace those hard choices in their life. So mm -hmm. uh, that that is very helpful. And I, I think that poetry gave me a, an amazing uh, ex amazing um, part of, of my uh, craft or skill of living that I was able to uh, embrace, practice, and because of that, uh, definitely a becoming a better person in, in the, because of that. What is one moment when you felt most grateful? When we when we came to uh, U US, uh, yeah. so we were for a while uh, uh, homeless, right? You know, we didn't have any help. We, we had six hundred dollars. We lost our luggage, and we ended up with this uh, uh, people uh, in Los Feliz, uh, in LA, and. Um, slept on a floor uh, in uh, somebody's room, one room. And we slept for days there. And after we, that was really kind of a one uh, thing that actually we found the floor <laughs> to sleep on. But uh, uh, there was a woman, Lydia, and Lydia uh, had uh, a house um the second house on, on her property that was in the process of build up. And it was half built and there was this room that 
uh, was finished, half finished. So she let us to live there, and she uh, also fed us, you know, every day. And so she was always like a mother in in America that we met, and she gave us this gift, you know, of goodness, kindness, and it was for about two months because uh, it took us two months to find the work. I found the work in in the power source in Burbank. I walk up there and and found the job. And when we when I found the job, it was five dollars per hour. That's what I started. And then uh, Anila found also the the job in the same uh, gym. And yeah. it was about two months, and we were on our own. We rented one room with another guy that was uh, also from Poland and uh, we work all days and then we had this one room to share and that was for about four months and then we were able to rent ourselves uh, a separate room a room for us on so Lydia so, yeah and it was slow the process I guess like all right yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay if you could teach or uh, pass a skill to other people, what would that be? Well, definitely, you know, the ability to uh, to choose hard choices or to recognize them and, and accept them in life. So, mm. uh, a, so a person could uh, progress in life or not be emotionally. Uh, driven uh, by wildness and, and uh, immediate gratifications, but delay gratifications, uh, build something and keep building, you know. Uh, so that would be, you know, this this ability to, to recognize the hard choices and accept them and, and then manifest the, uh, the results of actually practicing those hard choices. Okay. What are you currently reading? I read all the, mostly poetry. Yes. Uh, yeah. I read contemporary poetry and uh, get magazines, all kind of poetry magazines, read poetry. But also I read, um, rare read <laughs> the stuff. And, and the book that I read it over and over, over, that is... Uh, Victor Frankl, Frankl's book, uh, the the Doctor and the Soul. Mm, I haven't read this one. That really, uh, I read it over and over. I just, you know, like I read it probably ten times, and I keep reading. So it's a very powerful uh, book and messages in that. Okay. It's all like logotherapy, and then Victor mm-hmm. Frankl, and then. Uh, the power of uh, attraction or love that helps you to, to survive, like help him to survive Holocaust. So that's uh, in that book. Okay. What would you put on a flyer that would be seen by the entire world? Hard choices in life. Easy choices got life, right? <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely that, that message. Our life <laughs> You know, it, it it can be a really great life. And, and hard choice doesn't mean hardship. Hard choices mean wisdom. It's been, you know, uh, to choose something that uh, helps you to uh, adapt, to grow, to uh, to develop, you know, more, uh, to live the life that is preventive life and not immediate life, not to create uh, delay gratification. You know, look at the retirement, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So, and you know, do we have money yeah. to retire, right? Well, it's a, it's a hard choice, you know, when you are thirty years old or twenty-five to uh, save hundred dollars every every month, right? <laughs> but you will have millions in thirty-five years. <laughs> but you know, but it's really hard for us to really uh, make it happen. It's a hard choice. Well, you know. Yeah. Health as well, you know, it's, uh, mm. it's a hard choice to eat what is good for some reason. The hard choice is always something that it's hard for you, 
It doesn't have to be hard for somebody else, right? If you hate vegetables, but vegetables are good, that is your hard choice, <laughs> right? <laughs> to, eat, to eat vegetables because it's uh, genuinely good and it's good for us, right? So, so something is always like, you know, to save money, if you, if you hate sa- saving money, but saving money is good for us. You know, it, it's, it's create, yeah. you know, uh, wealth and, and uh, better living because of that. So uh, the, the teaching people that put, you know, this kind of hard choices is a life on somewhere where people could see it all the time <laughs> would be fantastic, you know, because, <laughs> yeah, we, you know, it, we have to have something to remind ourselves about on a yeah. daily basis what we are here for. I, I remember it was uh, Tim Ferriss was writing the the book uh, the tribe of mentors, and yeah. it was a uh, question about uh, about uh, something that you spend and it's less than hundred dollars and then really made yeah it. yeah the investment of less than one hundred dollars exactly. So I had this bracelet right at the time, and he asked me what what, what is it all? And but you know bracelet should be your <laughs> your words and not and stay your words so nobody should know it's like a mantra in a way like meditate mm-hmm. every mantra like i meditate you know 35 years and i have my mantra but they you know you don't tell your mantra anybody it loses somehow the power yeah makes so sense on, for sure so on this bracelet with uh so i put this first letter of the sentence i am responsible for calming down people and you know, I wanted to engage with people and I wanted to calm down myself and give the space to others. And and then, you know, whenever I was on too much, then I look at that and on daily basis, I would look because I would take a shower and I would know what is it. And it would constantly remind me about becoming that person. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Hard choices is another uh, bracelet. Hard choices is alive. It's, it just reminds you that uh, in order to create a better life or in any kind of improvement, changing things for, for better is always because of a hard choice. That's why it's needed. Okay. Who is your favorite cartoon character and why? I don't have one. Hmm. Okay, I, sure. I I don't even know what's that. Like for um, uh, I don't know. For me, I'm thinking about for my example. It's it's Batman from the from different cartoons that I watched as a child, or Tom and Jerry. I don't know. Where is it? Incredibles. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They are funny. They are witty. <laughs> Every everyone has a different um. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. at the same time, as a family, they uh, this uh, a unit that is bigger than the part uh, mm-hmm. separately, right? So uh, yeah, I really like Incredibles. It was very uh, <laughs> and it's 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 about people that want to you know help other people. I guess you know that's what I do. Yeah. As my focus is to help people and, and not to rob people. <laughs> <laughs> so. True, true. What fear did you overcome and what did you learn from the experience? You know, I I, uh, I had this fear of dying young. <laughs> mm. Constantly, you know, like I had this, you know, uh, I had this fear that but young and die young because of illness. Okay. It was like a long, it was like uh, long with me, that thing. I was just thinking it's just sad when you, we when we die kind of young, when you are 30 and 40 or, or 5 or 10, right? And uh, so um, what really happened to me is <laughs> like, I was going through years, right? And then eventually I became 50 and 60. But, you know, I changed uh, my life, my way of uh, living from the perspective of food, meditation, and exercise. Now, all of it became so good that 
I dropped the fee for some reason. And uh, I talked to Naval Ravika, and you know, I, I told him that one day I, I told him, you know what? It's just something happened to me. I, I had always this fear, and and I drop it. And I don't know if it's I'm just old and I don't have it anymore, or or the way I live is like I maybe I I just almost do everything what is right, what is good. And as long as I do that, and if things happen to me, that they happen. At least I did all that is <laughs> that is good actually to be okay, right? Yeah, maybe you got bored of the idea. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have my saying now: you can eat as good as I am, no matter who you are in the world. You can eat as good as I am, but not better than I. <laughs> it, it's like. The way I eat is just veggies, veggies, a little bit fruit. So uh, no matter you know uh, who you are, you just cannot eat better. <laughs> this is the end of the story. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't beat this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I, and Naval, you know, said, you know, one day he said, well, you know, there is no research done, you know, that somebody died <laughs> because of eating too many veggies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, that's true too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. If you could uh, meet one person that you haven't met, no matter the timeline, who would it be, why, and what would you talk about? Well, it probably would be Socrates. Mm. You know, uh, Stoicism. You know, uh, a stoic, right? And you know, the one thing is that he uh, lived a life and ended his life without giving satisfaction, you know, to to the men of power. That satisfaction that would break him, right? That that would you know uh, scare him, or you know, if if they uh, uh, the men of power would take away his life so they they could see that he uh, was frightened but he was not he didn't give that satisfaction when he was ordered to uh, uh, to leave the city or uh, stay but he got to commit suicide and he committed yes. suicide right so yes. it's like uh, it never worked and I think that uh, this uh, what he had really was amazing. An amazing power that uh, was completely free, right? That yeah. was not, he was not dependent on, you know, on length of living or the quality of living at all. So mm -hmm. he was always himself and he has this, he was the man of self discipline. So I would like to, you know, talk to him about how did it happen, you know? How did it happen? He became what he became, right? This, 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 uh, this quality that is completely free in the world that is insane. And then mm. that's why you know he said, you know, you should uh, eat to live and not live to eat, right? When you think about twenty five hundred years ago, you know, uh, somebody comprehended the problem, right? Somebody comprehended yeah. the, pro the problem that. We have it today, and we are dealing with that same problem today. You know, twenty five hundred years passed, and no change. Actually, no change. No, we're getting worse, not better, really. So, I, how, how, we, why we cannot really um, conquer that that simple thing of overeating of, of this um, that it you know, become so destructive in our life. That's why, you know, uh, in, I remember Socrates said that self-control is more pleasurable than self-indulgence. And it's true. You know, when, when I'm okay, when I do what's right and when I do what's planned, and I feel better next day. But if I give in, mm. I don't feel better. I don't feel better next time next day so there is a something around you know 
you know, like out of control. Who wants to be out of control? And, you know, like uh, out of control, it's not pretty. It's not beautiful. You know, Plato tried to give us the image and, about that. And he said, when the chariot is the body and the horses are our emotions and the rider is the mind. So here is what happens. He said, if the horses are dragging the rider against his will, danger is coming. Mm-hmm. So it means out of control, right? Yeah. yeah. And somehow we don't kind of like, we need a lot of teaching. We need a lot of learning and we need a lot of, you know, hard choices and embracing the self-control. Do you think it ever uh, ends, this mm-hmm. process of, do you think it ever ends, this process of? I hope so. You know, we we uh, we change for better, right? We, we change a lot of things for better. Yeah. When you look at 50 years, even 100 years, we are changing. We are changing a lot for better. When it, our, uh, our progress, when it comes to acceptance of uh, different people, uh, is, is amazing. Our process of not accepting bad behaviors, uh, especially about women, you know, we, uh, we crank on it. You know, we get closer to it. You know, we, we are not permitting things that could be permitted 20, 30 years ago. And, 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 and the things that would put uh, other people in discomfort, right? And so we are changing. We're yeah. getting definitely better. We're improving our language. And I, I, I see that people today in the 20s and 30s, when they come to me, they want to uh, a way of life that would uh, support the quality of life until they are 100 years old. And they will follow, but they want they, they want assurance that is going to happen, the sustainability. And these people are already there. They do mentally something. The mental qualities are more important for them than emotional. They were they are able to control those things. So they they want delay gratification. They want a plan for it. They want sustainability. And these are different people that they are growing today. That twenties and thirties, mm. and it, it's really it's a good thing to see. I like it. Yeah. And even the couples are coming sometimes, you know, and couples are working uh, better today than couples 30 years ago. So I had a lot of couples that I coach. They were in the 50s and 60s, and usually they were not capable to work together. Yeah. And one of those would break sarcastic or you know, complaining or blaming and so on and turn uh, everything into impossibility. But today, couples, and I have many of them, they are not that. The man is cap- capable of adapting and including a woman and becoming the partner of the woman. And that's beautiful. That really is amazing. I, I, I'm really happy to, to really see that. The next question follow, follows up a, a bit uh, with uh, your answer and is what is something that most people learn only after it's too late? <laughs> <laughs> what is something? Hmm. Yeah. Until it's too late. After it's too late, yeah. They find it out after it's too late. Well, it's, uh, you know, I tell people that, you know, being old is something that is, uh, is, it's like the saying is, like, uh, uh, aging is not for sisters, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, uh, you know, you, 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 you have to be really, yeah, <laughs> uh, powerful and, 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 and when you age, you you have to be a lot of better than before. So because aging is is making you worse. So if aging makes you <laughs> worse, you have to actually get a lot of better. And then, um, so uh, my 
my uh, idea is that old people, or when we age, we should never lose the possibility of being useful. So once you lose the possibility of being useful as an old person, and then you are locked to the room and TV, and that's mean you are gone, you are done, right? So now being useful, you have to do something to be around people. So the people could uh, really need you. So you you have yeah. to create this possibility for uh, for people to to need you to uh, to get something out of you, right? So it's like uh, you know I am sixty seven, and then um, people love to learn from me, right? I have something to offer, and I'm working all the time on that, and I'm improving that with with time and uh, with uh, years, right? Yeah. But I have something to offer. Uh, because I have something to offer, I also uh, keep the youthfulness with myself. And all our our friends are friends in 30s and 40s. We don't have friends that they are in 60s, really. <laughs> we have mostly friends in 30s and 40s. And some our friend friends uh, parents are our age. And when they sometimes we talk and they said, "Our parents are your age," like it's like weird <laughs> because we don't really behave. Uh, uh, we do, we don't behave as you know, as as we as our age is really. So yeah. so be to create some kind of a quality that. It's too when it's too late. It's too late. Nobody wants you, and then, and then we start complaining that you know our our daughters are not coming and grandchildren, grandchildren, and then we don't have interactions and so on. You see, uh, you have to be responsible for being useful for others and also very kind and good, so that they they will want you. As soon as, as as you create such a thing that you are not really uh, useful or you are not likable, and then then you will be destined to be alone, and that is that is not that's that that mm. sometimes is just too late, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's very sad when it's too late because you know uh, being with other people uh, it is the way to live. Yeah, yeah. I think loneliness is one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. Right. It's but, like when yeah, when you, yeah. you're alone, you're alone. Right. It's like uh, yeah. uh, on or unwanted. So yeah. so that that quality, you should work all the time on something that you could be wanted, mm. and you could be wanted uh, for you your children or grandchildren or wanted to for the care or wanted for your knowledge or wanted for skills whatever it is but wanted you know like uh, yeah. i see a lot of uh, in silicon valley you know, people who have money accumulated money and other people want them in to invest and they have interactions with other people right so yeah. they they go to 70s and 80s and 90s and they are excited they they uh <laughs> they invest money here and there, and they have interactions to create to be part of 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 companies that they uh, uh, they will be built. And you know, some people who write songs and you know write you know novels and poems and and read them and read them until they are in nineties. So and and somehow they are in the in the system that uh, helps them to. Interact with other people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, you know, is that? Mm -hmm, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say is I was thinking about that thing like uh, if you stop growing, you die basically. If you're not yeah. like useful, you 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 simply die. I guess. Yeah, that's even metaphorically. That's what it means. I guess. Yeah. The the yeah the worst is you, if uh, if if you are not among people. Yeah, you know when when people use sign you off, then 
then it's like a death sentence almost. Next one. If tomorrow you could keep from your material stuff only what fits in a backpack, what would you keep? <laughs> <laughs> Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> A toy, a toy. <laughs> That's not stock, right? <laughs> Credit cards. <laughs> Credit cards, good. <laughs> you know, it's like we always, we always joke. You know, uh, if you travel, what do you take? I said, I take credit cards. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the best answer. One hundred percent, right? <laughs> But if it was something. You know, I always write every day. It's a journal, probably a pen. I meditate. Yeah. So I don't need to take anything because I meditate everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I have a journal, a pen, and, and a, a book of poetry that I kind of uh, create out of poems that I like. So when, when I'm depressed or something, then, <laughs> then I open the book in, uh, somewhere and, and read one or two poems. And I'm yeah. done with depression. I'm over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, when you read about something uh, really, really tough, what other people really go through, and they embrace it with this, uh, with these qualities of uh, of being humble and yeah. appreciative. And when you read that, experience that, then that that your thing becomes very small, right? And then you shake off. <laughs> of yeah. Your- Problems, <laughs> your problems are no problems anymore. <laughs> true, true. So uh, reading is powerful, especially uh, the reading that can deliver the uh, this this space that you can uh, mm. uh, you, you can you can be inspired by the, the writer to make your own hard choice. And pull mm-hmm. out yourself out of the uh, misery of negativity, you know, the blaming, complaining, and sarcasm, and yeah. so on, on all yeah. the other things, right? Yeah. If you could know the absolute and total truth to one question, what question would you ask? Well, So that would be probably about how to uh, work on us on yourself to create your your best version, right? Uh, but as a pleasure, right? You know how to improve yourself mm-hmm. and how to do it. Uh, how to do it in a way that is uh, that is nurturing you backward. So that's why I like the happy body that that I created. That it's it's teaching uh, fitness or exercise with pleasure and joy, and improve uh, improve as you as the years pass. Improve with daily joy and pleasure, and not really uh, beating you know yourself. And and thinking that that way is a good way, right? Mm-hmm. That uh, overtraining yourself or uh, causing pains and and problems. So um, I, I like Stoic's idea of uh, yeah. nature and and responsibility. So the Stoics believe that nature the nature brought you here. And if the nature brought you here. I, you must somehow uh, give back. And so, w- what would you give back, right? So, um, the, you are giving back uh, your best version. And why you giving back your best version? I think is is it is needed for the civilization to move forward and to evolve mm-hmm. and become uh, more humane. And So I would definitely go around uh, about the how to how to make it happen. How to make it happen. 
yeah how to how, how to make that the journey happen mm. of the uh, better version of you and how to implant that everybody's mind right so mm. so we are not losing that we are not really becoming people that uh we just work and eat right i you know uh my daughter asked me kind of a similar uh no she said that i know why to uh to constantly learn and, <laughs> and progress and so on right and and then she said uh, maybe i'm not needed here or something like that right it's not really important that i'm not important i said well you don't know mm. you really don't know you know because if you because sometimes we need people the planet needs sometimes people to survive right and we don't know who is going to be that person and nobody knows right nobody knows we you know why you are needed and nobody knows who will be president of united states and who will be nobel prize winner for peace nobody knows who is going to impact others so it if we don't know then everyone should really work you know and becoming this best best version to give back to the planet right to be to give back and not thinking that you are not important everybody is important or somebody can be important in 1 billion of people but since nobody knows who then everybody should work really hard you know and to we should all, to become we should the best person right yeah 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 and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Stoics believe that that is our responsibility to the planet, to the nature that brought us here. And I think it's a very beautiful thing and, and uh, inspire me and motivates me throughout my life. Hmm. I think it's, this is the most powerful uh, line that I've ever found, you know, the, 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 the idea. Okay, okay. This one you answered a bit more or less, and it, it is what do you do when you can't focus? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I response, yeah. but I also yeah. cook soups. I go <laughs> to the kitchen and I cook soup <laughs> right away. I pull the big pot and pull the onions, potatoes, some greens. You love potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I love potatoes. Put everything in, cook soup, and uh, and I eat one or two cups, and that it makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, cooking makes me very happy, but uh, also exercise is good. Makes me happy too. Uh, Olympic weightlifting is amazing. It takes my. It's 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 reading a poem is so powerful that uh, will take your mind right away away from what you are thinking what causes your problem depression and so on right so it's powerful it takes you out and takes you in meditation yeah. does it too and and cooking does it too you go to the kitchen and then you you peel the potatoes and you start really doing it this is immediate uh singularity of the mind and uh, doing something right away you become yeah. It became yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleaning, it began the cleaning, you put everything, and, and because of that, you rest that mind that caused the, you know, the problem. Mm -hmm. And the same is Olympic weightlifting. You cannot really lift, uh, snatch, and, and think about that the, the world is not a good place. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right? laughs> so, um, Definitely doing something that that's why in the happy body the singularity of the brain is in force. So mindfulness in is in force. And uh it's a return to the mindfulness would be the way to uh, to return to focus and to focus to, to to do something that requires that mindfulness. Two more questions. What's a belief that you hold which many people disagree with? I think every people, you know, I hear a lot that people are lazy. People say that people are lazy, and I, I, I don't say that. You know, like uh, I, I, I see people 
that people are in their existence doing life as good as they can and uh, and that they just simply don't have imagination to see their life and to see uh, that there is something to do in their life that there there is a uh, there is a plan in that life and there is a improvement in that life and there is not so um, and not so hard to do that you know sometimes we are overwhelmed by uh, what needs to be done but that what needs to be done is so simple in a way but we don't step in so we don't have this energy and then people try to say that they are people are just lazy and they don't do things no they they are in that state that in that state they're almost paralyzed but in that state, they don't have enough inspiration, imagination, enough uh, to to see a bigger world out of this, so they could actually choose those hard choices and create the plan, reach for the plan, get the message, and uh, come out of that place that um, makes them... Uh, impossible to 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 um to evolve you know to to get better or you know happier yeah. or whatever it is right so i i don't like i don't like when uh and then people would disagree with me that people <laughs> they say no no people are lazy no 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 i said no 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 they are not they they just need help mm. they need help to to uh uh, with the the skills and I say the imagination to come out of it. Yeah, yeah. Last one. Is there any exact method that leads us to what we want or dream to achieve? <laughs> Is there any recycle? <laughs> that would be wonderful. If you <laughs> <laughs> Why not? In the Silicon Valley, they would just pick up right away and then create an app, and everybody would. Say, <laughs> but there is <laughs> the thing that really there is, you know. Mm-hmm. So I love Stoics, and and I I think that that's the most beautiful way of living. And then, um, in the Stoics, can be you know said in in four words and everybody kind of is a blend of these four words, self-control and virtues. And uh, stoicism, stoicism is about, you know, if, if it's up to you, control yourself. If it's not up to you, do not try to control something that is not, you know, to control because you will start manipulating. Now, um, the whole virtue, uh, pursuit of the virtue, is uh, achieving really happiness in life. So the happiness is, according to really Stoics, happiness is the side effect of being a good person. So you, so in a way, when you ask about a method, the method would be really uh, to work on yourself to be, become virtuous human being. So then, uh, so when you when you work on yourself, eventually it will come to the point that uh, you become a, a kind man, not in the mind, but you really becoming a kind man. We, pay, we become patient and and you become caring man and and all of it, you know, the, the virtues. And then once you uh, and you will drop the fears and 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 blames and and complaints and. You know, all of this uh, is going to happen uh, or you are on the way toward that. You know, it's like, you know, Stoics, they think that there is a perfect Stoic that you will never be. So it's like you would never be Jesus or Buddha, right? But yeah, but you can, uh, you can, you know, uh, on, in a daily routine, you can really think about that and you can, um, you can reach uh, toward that and then will help you to manifest you know 
kind of the the love including all people right that that kind of that you can have and in in and in that space when you are in that space uh you will you will experience you know complete satisfaction that you know with life you know no matter how hard it is no matter how it is where is it but you will experience this equanimity with the with the stoics are saying but i think it's just happiness that you know uh everybody wants to be happy so For if sure. you ask people uh would you rather to be uh wealthy and miserable or poor and <laughs> and happy <laughs> everybody will will choose the happiness so definitely happiness is is uh all what we need and everybody would agree that's what's about uh life is about to be happy then then if you uh if you could find a method toward that that would be probably you know we know that a wealth is not going to deliver that right health is not going to deliver because we have you know uh unhealthy people that they are happy right they yes. keep the happiness with really in the miserable uh, physical life they are still have this attitude beautiful attitude like uh what victor franco was saying right so no matter how miserable your life can be right physically you you can have this inner beauty inner happiness right so um then it's just the same uh with you know wealth that's why you know i think that you know happiness is available to everyone and in every moment you don't have to wait yeah. to it's not 10 years uh, far in the future or 10 years back in the no. past no you just need to uh, really start work working on yourself because you know you have to look inside and and see that you are a good person i think it's in in uh, as a joke a thing in quran i think it was in the joke was said on um, bucket list in the movie mm. so so there is a a guy comes to to heaven and there are two questions yeah right one question said did you find joy in life oh yes but you have to ask yes right <laughs> to the two questions in order to enter the heaven <laughs> the second question is the that question right the second question is did other people find joy because of your joy ah uh, so good right and here is this virtues right because virtues are about the goodness and then if you start becoming there you are so good you go to bed you sleep you you look you see other people and you enjoy every conversation you like people and you, you like inspire from yeah your way of being yeah yeah you like people and people will like you and and, and you like animals and every and you work hard and everything is working and that that delivers this side effect of uh, of being good with yourself and 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 be calm right then you in life you you are okay you are you are satisfied you're okay with the way your life is and i think that's an amazing thing when you actually can happen to a person yeah i guess it sounds a bit like we are i mean the optimistic view is like uh, we are all helping each other to become happy in the end i guess that's the game probably right and then uh, you have to internally uh, actually feel it not mentally become that person but mm. internally you have to become kindness right it's like the saying is uh, you cannot give love if you don't have it right mm. so you cannot give happiness if you really don't have it you can only give something that uh, looks like a smiley face but pleasure you can give pleasure and some things but not really happiness happiness is a bigger uh, thing right so it's like love right it's, it's a it's a, or or you know kindness you you have to have it inside of you so that's what you need to work on and everybody needs to work on 
And the, the, for Stoics, these are the virtues. These are the things that are most important for us. And the, the, the qualities that we should never really stop working on until, until we, uh, we stop being here. <laughs> a never-ending game, I guess, if we look our, at never, our system. It, yeah, yeah. And never ending again. You never know where it's going. It's just the same as as who you uh you know, maybe you become, right? So is it is it you who is going to save the world one day? We really don't know, but it could be you. It since it could be you, you yeah. are responsible to that planet to uh to really work on yourself and to deliver that qualities that you could become. That would be really useful, right? These were the questions and uh I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> we we finished the, the It's podcast. all fun. It's uh you know never like you said, never ending uh process. Never ending process of uh talking to each other and you never know, you know, uh who will be watching this and yeah in a one word or two or three will strike uh, the person's uh, uh, existentialism and the person will say ah i got it oh i had to do this and that That's and from there it starts if that yeah. happens right yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah i i totally agree with this i totally agree with this and I mean, that's the beauty of it because it's not precise. It's And I think it's about like different personalities at the right time, I guess, because other way, yeah. And it is the no, no ending process of uh, in, uh, creating goodness in the world by creating the goodness uh, with yourself, within yourself. Because if you create that, a little bit goodness within yourself. It means they created a little bit more goodness in the world. And by creating this goodness, right, we we can, you know, make the world a better place in that way. And I think that's the only way we have. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, for sure. And 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 it's available to everyone. You don't you don't have to go. And uh, be politician, and, and you don't have to uh, go and speak, you know, in UN. You you have your way to make the world a better place, especially in, now with the internet. I mean, yeah, and within your uh, within yeah, your yeah within your street, own network right? also, also in your also, yeah, world yeah. and family. You on the streets have, that you go to work, I guess. I don't know. It can be anywhere. Yeah. Yes, of course. You know, and you know if it's. A little, bit, a little bit more kindness and uh, in your life, in you, then the world is already a better place. So be it. We reach the end of the episode. Our host, Daniel, is always searching for new guests. If you have any people in mind that you want to see in the podcast, please share the names via social media. Want to support our journey? Please review, share, and subscribe to our social channels and help us inspire more and more people. See you in the next episode.